Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. So in this one, we're gonna be talking about the Canon EOS R5 and the potential overheating issues that this camera has. Uh, we're gonna be doing quite a bit of testing and showing you guys what the overheating experience is like and what the cool down period is gonna be. So let's get into it. Now the very first test I've got here is the AK30 IPB test. This is shot in the studio, which is about 72 degrees. And as you can see at the very beginning, the camera says that it thinks it has 15 minutes of record time. Uh, I'm testing it and showing shooting just a iPad with a stopwatch timer on it so that we've got something to look at. And as you can see here, everything is fine up until about 15 minutes or, minutes or so is when the high temperature timer or little icon starts to blink. And that's right in line with the initial estimate. As you can see right there, 15 minutes, uh, the blinking starts and it actually goes for a heck couple more minutes before it completely shuts down. Now, the temperature shot on the back of the camera shows 103.8 degrees right as the uh, the blinking starts and actually goes for a couple more minutes until it completely gives out right at 18 minutes 43 seconds again measuring the back of the camera 103 degrees fahrenheit when you try to turn on the camera again to do another shoot you'll see that it shows zero minutes left for the record and it will not let you shoot anything else. So all that you can do is turn it down, turn it off and let it cool down. So as you can see here, about an hour later with the counter still running, the temperature on the back of the camera is right at 81 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's cooled down about 20 or so degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the back of the camera is generally the hottest location right around the hand grip. Uh, that's why we're always testing the temperature right there. So for the second session of the AK30, you'll see that um, after about an hour, you can shoot again. The initial estimate on the second shot is at about 10 minutes, according to the camera. Almost 10 minutes into the shoot, the icon starts to blink again, showing high temperature, and at 11 minutes, 50 seconds, the high temperature trip occurs and the camera shuts down. So that's a total of 18 minutes and 43 seconds on the first shoot and 11 minutes and 50 seconds on the first, second shoot. Uh, about an hour's worth of cool down gives you approximately 60% of, of the shoot time of the initial, um, initial cold camera time. So when you take a look at the temperature on the camera on the second shutdown, it reads 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, 98.6 degrees is right around the body temperature. So when you feel the camera, you'll feel that the camera lens is cold. The body, the rest of the body is not very hot at all. The bottom of the camera is at ambient temperatures. Uh, it's really only around the grip area that's kind of warm and the back of the camera is kind of warm. Uh, mainly where the body is made out of metal. Uh, you can imagine the SD card, or actually the CF Express card is going to be hot. The battery might be a little bit warm. That's all in the camera grip area. So uh, depending on where the sensor or where the, where the processor is, that is clearly going to be hot too. But uh, the rest of the camera is relatively cool. So for the next shot we have here is the AK30 high quality shot. This is also shot in IPB. This is basically taking the entire 8K sensor and super sampling it down to 4K all internally. Uh, the camera estimates a total of 25 minutes available on the shot. And what we'll see is the generally the camera estimates are pretty accurate. You'll either get the camera estimated time plus maybe one or two extra minutes. So here we are recording into the 4K30 with the 8K super sampling. To me, this mode is most useful and I had the highest hopes for this because honestly, 8K uh, video is not, not prime time yet. You know, 4K is, is basically where everything is shot at. Uh, it would be nice to have 8K footage 
downsampled to to 4K, especially if you're doing YouTube stuff, get that extra little bit of texture resolution, but all in 4K. You don't have to edit in 8K, you don't have to do a full 8K workflow, but having a little bit extra detail in 4K, that's where uh, that's where it's it could be potentially pretty useful. So I was actually pretty happy that the runtime was pretty good. You know, 20, at 25 minutes, we see that the camera is at about 107 degrees. So it's getting kind of warm right around where the t light turns on. And sure enough, at 29 minutes and 11 seconds, the camera overheats at 102.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, giving the camera about an hour's worth of cool down time Doing a second shot here, the camera estimates about 15 minutes worth of runtime. Uh, 15 minutes is basically half of uh, 29 minutes. So right around that 50, 60% uh, runtime after about a one hour cooldown. Uh, as I was saying, this is actually pretty encouraging because you know we've got 29 minutes in the first one and the camera's saying about 15 minutes of runtime on the second one, we'll, we'll find out is we're actually closer to 19 minutes of runtime. So uh, I believe that this mode is pretty usable. If you are shooting, uh, for example, if you're a wedding photographer and you just want that little bit extra detail, right? You can shoot your five or six minutes clips here and, and turn off the camera and, and you know, move to your next scene uh, and do another clip there and, 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 and whatever. You'll see that the temperature at when it shuts down for the second time is 97.1 degrees. So it's a little bit lower, but um, clearly internally it has hit the limit. What 4K30 super sampling is not for is if you have to shoot maybe like 40 minutes of continuous runtime, uh, that's just not gonna work with this camera. For the very next shoot, we've got 4K120 IPP again. This is, as you can see here, limited to seven minutes, 29 seconds, according to the camera. Now this seven, nine, seven minutes, 29 seconds is actually a hard limit. This is not a recommended or uh, a, you know, estimated runtime. This is actually a hard cap. So once it hits seven minutes, 29 seconds, it just completely shuts down or it stops recording. Uh, and since it stopped recording and we did not have any high temperature indicator. I just restarted the recording again uh, immediately right after. You can see here on the second record, it shows a record time about five minutes. Now, this is, I think, pretty reasonable because 4K 120, this is going to be like getting those creamy slow motion shots. You're not going to be shooting for very, very, very extended periods of time. Uh, you're just going to be a clip here, a clip there. Uh, at about seven minutes on the second record, seven minutes, 20 seconds, that's when it completely shuts down. So now the body shows a temperature of 92.6 degrees. My guess is that uh, the, since the sensor or the processor heated up so quickly due to the 4K120, it hadn't had the chance to radiate the heat out. That's why the body is a little bit cooler than the previous two tests. The final test here is 4K 120 IPB. Uh, this final test here, the camera actually estimates a full 29 minutes and 59 second record time. And sure enough, what we'll find out is that it is able to do that full, full 29 minute, 59 second clip. This is somewhat encouraging since 4K 60 has been around for on multiple cameras in the past and on competition. So, you, you know, you would expect that this camera should be able to do something like that. 4K60 is kind of a semi-slow motion uh, shot. So uh, if you needed to do long, long shots of slow motion and just pick out what you need out of, out of that clip, then you could probably use 4K60. However, the downside is what you'll find is after 29 minutes and 59 seconds, uh, you're unable to record again very quickly right after that. So as the camera completes the first clip, the, it reads 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is, in our past experience, right around the, the high temperature mark. If you continue a second clip right after the first one, uh, what you'll see is that the camera says that it has only four minutes of runtime left. And sure enough, 
uh, after just a couple minutes of additional recording after the first clip, it indicates a high temperature and shuts down at four minutes, 46 seconds. So uh, added together, that's about 34 minutes of total runtime. And again, the body t reads about 102.5 degrees. It's right around that ballpark of high temperature trip. Now, again, if you feel the camera, the camera really doesn't feel that all that hot, to be honest. Uh, it's just mainly in the grip area on the back. So to sum it all up, the Canon R5 overheating issue is uh, a problematic in these four recording modes. The other recording modes are perfect, no problems at all. It's really mainly the 8K and the 4K super sampling and the 4K 120 and 4K 60 where we have the issues. The 8K 30 pulls about 18 minutes, 41 seconds. Um, and the 4K 120 is the worst at two consecutive, about seven minute clips for a total of 14 minutes, 49 seconds. Now, understanding if your camera is hot to begin with, or if your, uh, you know, your weather is hot, you're gonna get less runtime, and that's a real thing. Uh, a little bit better is the 4K 30, super sample down from 8K, uh, using the full sensor, 29 minutes, and you got another respectable 19 minutes after that, a one hour cool down, so that's pretty good. Uh, 4K 60, got 34 minutes of runtime consecutively, and I'm sure if you let that cool down a little bit, you'll get another 20 or so minutes of record. I, I just didn't bother because I thought that this was long enough of a test. Now, overall, to summarize what I think about the overheating issues on this camera. So overheating is a real thing, and uh, it's kind of disappointing to see that 8K has its limitations, but you do have to remember I personally would much rather have the capability of AK than not, uh, even if we have overheating, you know, physical limitations. Uh, would it have been nice if Canon addressed these issues right out of, out of you know, the factory? Yes, but rather than saying, ah, no, we can't do it because it overheats, I, I really like the idea of Canon pushing the envelope, giving us the features, and just us having to deal with uh, the impact of this decision. Um, you know, you look at Sony cameras. Sony cameras have overheated for a long time now. In fact, Sony cameras have less runtime than some of the numbers that we have seen here. So, you know, overheating isn't something new. It's, it's something new to Canon cameras, but I don't think we should be upset about this just because it's a first for Canon. Now, what can Canon do to the R5 to fix it. We do know that there is a firmware update that's coming later this year to help remedy this issue. I don't know, you know, we don't know how effective that's gonna be. My guess is they could potentially raise the limit on you know, the high temperature, you know, instead of being very, very conservative, uh, you know, just let it heat up a little bit more. Uh, that firmware update, you know, is a pretty easy fix. Another method that they might be able to change is, or fix this issue is if they can change either the codec or the recording method, you know, I would be willing to sacrifice a larger, larger video file if it means a little bit less heat, a little bit more runtime, just give us another option for that in the firmware, that might, that might also work. Um, or, or, you know, like a different recording file, you know, motion JPEG, hell. Motion JPEG, aka 4K30, you know, just, just give us options, right? Now, the other thing where they could get a little bit more creative is if they had like a version two. There was a rumor about a four month delay on the second batch of cameras. We don't know if there's, it's gonna be a recall or if they're just retuning, uh, re revising some of the hardware components on the inside. Uh, we don't know that, but what they could potentially do is get a little bit better thermal interface material and or heatsink inside the camera for the processor. So it just in general, when using the camera, the camera doesn't feel all that hot. It gets a little bit warm, yes, but not as warm as you know the MacBook Pro. For example, this MacBook Pro is sitting here idle at 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you know, it's, it's warm to the touch, it's not hot. It's, it's just, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, the highest we saw was 103 degrees Fahrenheit. That tells me one, uh, either they're very conservative and or two, these 
chips themselves on the inside does not have a very good ability to dissipate the heat. If they had either a better thermal interface material or some kind of heat sink on the inside to get that heat to the you know magnesium shell, uh, to get that heat out, that might give us longer run times. And it might be as simple as just adding a little heat sink, solder to, or you know, welded to that body or connected to the body, that might be enough. So I do think that there are options for the R5. Will Canon actually implement them? You know, only time will tell. Maybe there are some easy, easy firmware updates that they can put in uh, just to raise that temperature limit and whatnot. I wouldn't pass judgment on the R5 just yet. There are clear limitations to it. Are there workarounds? Yes. Are these limitations usable? I think they are. I think understanding the limitations and working around them is possible. Will we see an improvement down the road? I think it's a sure bet. If you are on the fence about the R5, I would not uh, cancel a pre-order or cancel the order just because of the overheating issues of 8K. This is still a very good 4K 30 camera. There's no crop at all. Uh, it does everything you need it to do with a few extra very nice features of 8K and 4K 120, right? Like the fact that it overheats in these four modes doesn't necessarily make it everything else about this camera bad. You know, everything else about this camera is pretty darn amazing already. So, so there's that. Hopefully this video was able to answer some of your questions. You know, I certainly had some of my concerns, but after playing around with it, you know, it's, it is what it is, but it really isn't that bad. So uh, that, at least that's just my two cents. Anyway, if this video was useful, make sure to hit that like button and perhaps consider subscribing for future videos and perhaps comment down below about what your thoughts about the overheating issues on this camera are. I want to see what you guys think as well. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.